Welcome to our Moxie Joe's bathroom instructional video. This is Jenna Liao. She's been with us for almost four years. She's an amazing wife and mother of three. She stays busy shuffling her kids to their mini after school interests, inspiring them to be their best selves, having fun date nights with her husband, or working on her latest handmade toy or cross stitch. You can check out her talented work for sale at Jenna's Toys on Facebook. Now, Jenna is setting herself up for success right as she walks in the door of the bathroom. She places a large rag nearest the shower. She sets the green scrubby in the sink and pours a bit of bonami on the green scrubby. She also places the small bristle brush in the sink. She sprays the mirror with our all-purpose cleaner. She sets the toilet cleaner and brush in its container next to the toilet. Before her next move, she pours some of the cleaner into the toilet. This allows the cleaner to start working its magic while you work on the rest of the bathroom. Then she takes her bucket to the shower. She empties her bucket of its products. She places the large bristle brush in the shower. She removes all the personal products out of the shower. And then if there's not a sprayer in the shower, she turns on the water to fill the bucket ever so slightly and shakes a little bonami in the bucket. Then she heads back to the mirror. With her dry rag, she cleans the spots on the mirror and lightly wipes away any of the dust on the mirror up. The reason she uses her dry rag is mirrors don't do well with wet rags. Using a wet rag takes more work and time to clean. The reason you clean the mirror first is you have a completely dry rag to work with. When cleaning mirrors, you do not always need to spray the entire mirror. If it's not super dirty, just spray the area where you see spots. Cleaning mirrors can be tricky. Some areas might need a lot of muscle, and in other areas, it might take just a light touch. It really is a matter of practice to get used to what works best. That said, if you're having a tough time with the typical rag, grab your e-cloth. These work great on mirrors and glass. After the mirror, she cleans the sink. With the green scrubby and the bit of bonami that's already on the scrubby from when she was setting up the bathroom. She looks for any stuck on toothpaste or whatnot in the sink. Once she's used the scrubby on bowl sinks, she's going to throw it in the bucket so it's there for her when she cleans the shower. Then she's going to hit the faucet, the handles, the trim of the sink, and the overflow drain holes at the top of the sink with the bristle brush. Again, when she's done with that, she'll throw the bristle brush in the bucket so it's ready for her when she cleans the shower. This also keeps the bathroom organized. If we're not thinking about where we're placing items every time we are finished with them, we are going to be all over the house looking for them, wasting time, and we might accidentally leave something behind. Now she's heading to the counter. She moves items from the back of the counter forward. She makes sure to hit all the details by taking each bracelet off of the bottles and wiping the bottles down. Now here, there was a layer of dust, so she used both rags. More often than not, you're going to only need the dry rag to wipe them down because they're being cleaned frequently. This will be up to your discretion in each house. There is always a fine line between spending too much time cleaning something that might not need that much time and making sure to get all the details. But don't worry, you'll get that stuff down in time. Again, she's pulling everything out of the jewelry tray and making sure the tray is polished and shiny. She's also making sure to place back everything in the same spot she found it. We have a lot of clients that are particular about their household items remaining in the same place. I can relate, I'm the same way. Once that's done, she wipes the entire counter behind the items so then she can place them back where they belong and then clean the other side of the counter. If we move one thing at a time, one, we're going to move it at a very slow pace, and two, we might miss cleaning a particular item or area of the counter. So now onto the toilet. This is the last time she's going to use this dirty rag, folks. She's cleaning a dirty toilet. You don't want to use that rag again. She's hitting all areas of the toilet. Under the lip of the toilet bowl is a must. A lot of mildew can build up in that area. And if you're not bending over, you're not going to see you're getting it all. So make sure to bend over and look at all angles. She's cleaning the bottom part of the seat, all the fasteners. She's cleaning inside the drain very well. Often you need both hands to brush off any buildup in the drain. Like this could take a lot of muscle. So make sure that you're getting it right. If you need to, you can do it multiple times. She's also going to flush as she's cleaning the toilet. Often the clarity of the water changes as we're cleaning. We can no longer see the bottom of the toilet. We need to flush to get a visual that is officially sparkly clean. 
No pink, no yellow, no black. It needs to be pearly white. Now, if you'd like to use gloves, you're more than welcome to. Just let me know and I will provide them for you. I feel it slows me down, so I choose not to. I instead wash my hands a million times when I'm cleaning a house. But whatever works best for you works for us. Now, after Jenna uses her toilet brush, she uses the dry rag that she was using on the sinks and counter to wipe down the toilet. She wipes the lid to the tank of the toilet, the seat cover, the seat itself, all the fasteners, and then she kneels down to wipe the outside bowl of the toilet and the lower part of the toilet, including the mounting caps and the water supply hose that is connected to the wall. Those get really dusty. Now, if the rag is too damp, it's not going to pick up any hairs or dust on the toilet. This will result in a toilet that doesn't look clean and or extra unneeded time spent trying to get them up with a damp rag. So go ahead and get a new one. Now for the shower, she's already got some water and bonami in the bucket. She swishes the green scrubbery around in the bucket and scrubs away on the whole shower. Floor, the seat of the corner, all the walls, the handle, the drain, everything. Then she uses a small bristle brush to clean around the drain and the temperature handle. Once she feels it's all scrubbed down, she rinses out the bucket and fills the bucket up with water so she can rinse all the walls. This takes a few rounds of adding water to the bucket and pouring that water in different areas of the shower. Once she's done with that, she puts all cleaning supplies back in the bucket. She sets the bucket aside. Then she grabs the large dry rag that she placed near the shower when she first entered the bathroom. She sprays the shower down with all-purpose cleaner, especially any chrome. She wipes down the walls, wipes away any stuck on hairs. She polishes the chrome up until it's shiny. Then she places the products back in the shower and wipes them down if needed along the way. Products should be put back lined up nicely with labels facing forward. Every time we clean a shower, we look at all angles after polishing to make sure there is no bonamy residue left behind. And if it's a tile shower, no water spots left on the tiles. If there's glass doors, we wanna look at all angles to make sure that there's no spots on those glass doors or streaks from us wiping it down. Now in this particular bathroom, there's also a tub. We know the towel that is on the side of the tub is used as a floor mat, so it's perfectly fine for Jenna to remove that and use to kneel on. This helps protect her knees a bit. Most tubs don't get used often. You can find this info on the specific checklist. This tub rarely gets used, so we're not going to use water whatsoever on this tub. Water will just slow us down. Jenna's going to remove all the items around, spray the tub with all-purpose cleaner, and wipe it out with a dry rag. She replaces all the items back, including laying the towel over the edge of the tub. With that same dry rag, she's going to head over to the toilet to wipe down the garbage can and then that rag is going to get tossed near the door along with the other rags she has used to clean the bathroom. So that's it on the bathroom portion of the instructional video. Next, we'll head to dusting and surfaces.